guys, welcome back to Semper Inter TV. Yes, it's the international break, two weeks away from Inter, but it doesn't mean we forget about Inter. I am going to be doing a little uh, quarter season review. Um, you know, technically it's not the quarter of the season, but let's not be anal about that. Seven games out of 38 in the league, a couple of games in the Champions League, so uh, enough to do a little review of what's gone on till now. So what I'm going to do is give each player in the squad a rating out of 10. Of course, we need to start with our defence and of course we start off with our number one, uh, Samir Handanovic. I give him a 7. Handanovic, of course, as we know, one of the most consistent players of this Inter team, one of the most underrated keepers in Europe, you know, he's been one of our most important players for a long, long time now. And last year, he proved it all throughout the season. He won uh, Serie A Keeper of the Year, quite deservedly so. And uh, this season, he's continued that form. Um, he's not actually had that much to do in most matches. Our defence has been, uh, you know, keeping shots away from him most of the time. Uh, nothing spectacular for Samir to handle. But in that Lazio match we played, he was outstanding. He came up with a few world-class saves and um, showing that you know he's not going anywhere a lot of people are expecting him maybe for this to be his last season but it looks like he'll have at least one more season after this and uh, whoever's going to come in to replace him is going to have a very big task moving on to our center backs because you know no other keepers played uh, we'll start off with our new signing Diego Godin came in with a big uh, reputation from Atletico Madrid probably one of the top five centre-backs in the world and um, yeah has uh, come in unfortunately um, suffered a few injuries uh, in once in pre-season and he has suffered a little bit at the beginning of the season as well but for, to me he's uh, slotted in there looks like he's always played at Inter and uh, you can see you know that uh, that hunger that desire that he has to play still at his age of 33 34 obviously you can see when he's faced one-on-one -on -one with some pacier players he can suffer of course he's not the quickest but i think he's been an excellent signing and he's showing exactly his quality i'm not going to give him a seven i think i might give him a 6.9 i think uh, just because of the injuries of course that's not his fault but you know i'm rating these players in terms of performance and what they've contributed to the team and unfortunately He's not been at 100% at all times due to the injury, so I'm going to give him a 6.9. Next to him, De Vrij. I think he's proven this year that he's our best defender, actually, in terms of performances. In terms of uh, name and reputation, he's not as rated as highly as Skriniar and Godin. But in terms of performances, he's definitely showing that he's, uh, he's our best defender. On the ball, he's very calm. Off the ball, he's very calm. Uh, leadership. And um, yeah, I'm so happy that we signed this guy on a free transfer like Godin and I give him a 7.5. On the left centre-back position, uh, Milan Skriniar, you know, the probably the most hyped of our centre-back, has struggled to adapt to the three at the back formation, I think, especially because he's on the left-hand side of the formation rather than the right-hand side. And of course, that means he has to play with his weak foot. The compromise that he kind of has to do at the moment but I think ideally he would rather play in the middle or on the right. He's not really struggled that much, but you can see he's not super comfortable. He's not played to the high levels that he has in the past. But still, I'm going to give him a 7. Moving on to the substitute centre-backs. Andrea Ranocchia still at this club after many, many years of mediocrity. And is now uh, a permanent backup to whoever is injured or needs stepping in. And uh, I'm going to give him a 6.5 actually. He uh, came in by surprise in the first game of the season. Played really well against Lecce, but you know, just for his leadership quality that he provides in on the in the locker room, you know, he's a popular character, positive influence around the other players. Yeah, the few minutes he had on the pitch, he was he was good. So I'm gonna give him a 6.5. Well done to Ranocchia for regaining trust and uh, you know rebuilding his reputation after uh, years of it being destroyed. Next up, our youngster Alessandro Bastoni came from. Uh, um, Atalanta, who was on loan to Parma last season, an impressive year. Of course, it's going to be difficult for him to get some game time with those uh, pillars in defence that we have. And uh, that one appearance he had against Juventus was uh, not too bad. You know, he was. Uh, you could see there's definitely a player there in the future. But that was a difficult game for him to step in, and of course, he could have done better for that Gonzalo Higuain goal. So I'm going to give him a uh, six. Next up, Mr. Reliable, Mr. Consistency, Danilo D'Ambrosio used to be uh, you know a meme character in la in the years past but now since last season he's uh, proven to everyone 
exactly what he's made of. He's one of the most improved players of this team and it's become so important that, you know, Conte seems like he's trying to fit him in wherever he can. Um, has played at right wing back, has played at right centre back as well. And that's, I think, that's where his best position is now. That position where, you know, he can use his defensive abilities, his uh, heading ability. And, uh, you know, in the right wing back position, I don't think he has that dynamism and that energy or that technical ability really to play that position at a top level um, but he does a job out there mr reliable i'm going to give him a seven moving on to our wing backs starting off with our newest signing uh biragi he's coming from fiorentina of course with a loan with the option to buy and uh once again he's not really had much playing time he's only had that one match but in that one match he was he was pretty good um showed his crossing ability and he's definitely a level up from Asamoah in terms of going forward hasn't been really tested defensively and that's where my concerns are when it comes to Biragi but you know we'll see in the coming weeks and months whether he's up to the task of uh, being an inter-level player and for now I'll give him a 6.5 just because of that one good appearance he had and I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. Staying on the left hand side Asamoah I'm giving him also a 6.5 um, of course Antonio Conte knows him really well from his Juventus time and uh, Asamoah with his physicality, experience. He's a really important player in this team, but he's, I'm still looking for the improvement from him attacking wise, and I really have not seen it yet. So that's why I'm giving him a 6.5. Moving on to the right hand side, another new signing has been uh, Valentino Lazzaro. Now, Lazzaro is probably my biggest disappointment of this season, um, so I'm only giving him a 5. Now, I know that sounds super, super harsh, but not rating these players in terms of you know the potential you know i'm rating them and what they've given us and lazaro unfortunately has only given us one substitute appearance like other players he's you know of course uh, the competition is very high and injuries unfortunately have not played a, a positive uh, part in his inter career for now uh, but it seems like antonio conte doesn't seem to rate him too highly either i mean uh, i guess he has worries about his defensive or tactical uh, ability yet you know of course it takes time to adapt to the Serie A especially coming from the Bundesliga which is very very different from the Serie A but I'm looking forward to Lazaro being determined to you know prove himself at Inter there's rumors of him even going back on loan to Hertha Berlin but I don't want to see that happening I want him I want to at least give him a good few games as a chance he's been playing for his Austrian national team as a starter but as a right winger in a 4-2-3-1 so I'm not sure whether a right wing back will be his permanent position but let's see how things develop and the starting right wing back for the majority of the game has been Antonio Candreva the most improved player of this team without a doubt I mean a lot of us may have seen it coming because we knew that Candreva was a uh, you know liked by Conte he was a uh, important part of Conte's Italian national team in 2016 at the Euros but you couldn't have imagined that at his age you know he's 32 now that he would have had this kind of revitalization of this level where he's becoming such an important part to the team and uh, you know he was one of the best players in the first few games and then he's had slowly had a bit of a drop off and some injuries as well but um, I hope he continues like this because this Candreva is not a mean player anymore. He's becoming a really, really important player. Moving on to the midfielders. Of course, we have to start with the guy who's probably our most important midfielder, Marcelo Brozovic, of course. Il Crocodillo, Epic Brozo. I'm going to give him a 7.5. You know, Spalletti is the one that moved Brozovic into that register position where he became so important and finally found his uh, true position on the pitch. But uh, under Antonio Conte, He's stepped things up to the next level. Thanks to the tactics and the fluidity of this team, he's been able to, you know, he's not as burdened uh, by the rest of the team as he was before. You know, in the, mid the midfield is now, we've got more quality in there. Thanks to Stefano Sensi and Barella, giving more quality, better passing ability in there. Whereas in the past, Brozovic kind of had to carry the midfield almost all on his own, on his shoulders. He's truly developing into a world-class midfielder. Next to him, of course, I just mentioned, uh, who I think, and I think most of you will think, is our player of the season, and that is the little magician Stefano Sensi. What a signing! When he came in from Sassuolo, I still remember making that video when uh, Inter stole Sensi off uh, Milan's hands, and I was saying that you know he looks like he will be uh, a substitute player, you know, 
perhaps the replacement for Borja Valero, you know, the guy who's in there to challenge for the spot, but then maybe not a given starter. But pff, boy, was I wrong. This guy is the one guaranteed starter in that midfield, even maybe ahead of Brozovic, because without him, our team almost collapses because he does everything. He's almost like a little uh, N'Golo Kante to the team, you know, tackling, passing, dribbling, assisting, scoring, everything. And uh, you saw against Juve when he had to come off for injury, and the team collapsed. And um, I hope that injury is not too serious. It looks like it's not too serious. He should be back uh, after the international break. It's just a thigh strain. But what a player we have found, guys. So I'm giving Stefano Sensi an 8. Our other big money signing from Cagliari this summer was uh, Nicolo Barella. Took his time to get, get into the team, let's be honest. Um, you know, a bit longer than maybe some people expected. And a lot of people on social media started to get on his back very early on, which uh, I couldn't understand. And I made a video saying, you know, come on, guys, chill out, give him a chance. And uh, yeah, in the last few weeks, he's really come good. And um, his energy, his intelligence on the pitch, um, his tackling ability, his uh, stamina is so vital to this team. I'm just waiting for him to start to add, you know, more runs into the box, assists and goals through his game. And he will really be a top top midfielder once he has those things to his game so i'm going to give him a seven moving on to matias vecino the favorite player of every inter fan <laughs> he's had a he's had a difficult season actually um he started off as a uh, in the starting 11 um as i kind of expected because i thought you know conte is always going to try to have that one taller more physical midfielder in there but then his performances weren't really up to the standard of you know brozovic and sensi he was always kind of uh, the weaker link in midfield and so he was eased out by uh, Gagliardini and Barella in the last few weeks. Made a return in the, in the Juventus match but was not good enough really. Um, you know, gives the ball, ball away way too easily. His footballing IQ is very low but you know, somehow he always manages to be in the right places at the right time and even at Juventus, in the Juventus game he almost scored, hit the post. <laughs> I don't know, this guy is an enigma. Um, I rate him and I don't rate him. It's, uh, it's a love-hate relationship. As I always say, between Gagliardini and Vecino, picking them is like picking between cholera and malaria. You're going to suffer either way. So I'm giving Vecino a 5.5. Moving on to his uh, partner, the cholera malaria partner, Gagliardini. I'm giving him a slightly higher rating of 6. Um, he scored a goal and I think he's had slightly better performances in this season. But once again, I'm kind of disappointed that he hasn't really made a big step up on the Conte. I thought he would improve on the Conte. He really struggles to impose his physicality. You know, he's a big, big, strong midfielder, but he just doesn't seem to know how to use his body well and his movement and his IQ, footballing IQ is lower than Vecino's. And, you know, I hope he improves soon because otherwise I see him being offloaded soon. And of course, Borja hasn't even played, so I can't even give him a rating. But shout out to young boy Boha. Moving on to the strike force, uh, starting off with our gunman Lautaro Martinez. He's had a great start to the season, I must say. He's uh, taken on the responsibility of becoming, you know, the go-to man for Inter's, Inter's attack and um, I'm giving him a seven. Yes, he's not scored enough, I agree. He's, he needs to improve his finishing and so he snatches our opportunities way too much. But of course, he is still quite young, 22 years old and uh, he's broken into the Argentina national team and he's uh, almost a starter for them every, almost every match. But looking aside the goals, the work that he does for the team, the link-up play that he has with the rest of the team, he can only improve from here on in. Matteo Politano uh, was close to leaving the club and I think a lot of Inter fans weren't you know, too bothered if he did. But I think he's an important part of the team and I think whenever he's played, as a starter or as a sub has been impressive. I think this is, will be a quite a debatable rating, but I'm giving him a 6.5. I think he makes a great impact every time he comes on as a sub. Yes, he still needs to improve that final ball and final product, but it's probably too late. I mean, he's 25, 26 years old now, but the energy and the pace he brings on later on in games, I think is gonna be invaluable this season. <laughs> the big reputation, probably the biggest name that we have on this team now, Alexis Sanchez. The dream signing of Inter fans for years, of course, has come maybe a few years too late, but he's finally here and he's, uh, you know, like other new incomes, has uh, taken his time to get into the team. 
Antonio Conte maybe is not sure about his fitness. First start against the Sampdoria. What a match, two goals, red card. Difficult to give him a rating, you know, he's not really had that much uh, playing time, but the little he's had, he's, he has been impressive. He was good against Barcelona as well. But, you know, the reputation that he has, the quality that we know he has, he needs to do better. So I'm giving him a six. Now the last one, but not the least, of course, this one will probably be the most argued and debated because, you know, he is a very opinion spitting player, our most expensive player of summer signing. Mr. 65 million, Romelu Lukaku. I'm going to give him a seven. See, I was debating there whether, you know, going below seven or not, but I'm going to give him a seven because of his off-field um, behavior as well. He's integrated with the team so well, you know, of course, I'm, I'm not one that pays that much attention to like what players are doing off the pitch, but you know, the way he's integrated with his teammates, the way he's been interacting on social media, he's already speaking Italian. I know he already spoke a little bit before. The passion that he seems to have for the club, for the fans and how badly he wants to move to us, how badly he wants to play for Conte. And you know, he's, he's he, alongside Sensi, he's our top scorer with three goals. You know, that's what we've brought him in for, for the goals. So of course we're expecting more from him in terms of goals and assists and link up play. Guys, if you watched Lukaku, you knew exactly what type of player we bought. This is not a surprise. I know a lot of people, I keep seeing people commenting about his touch, his link up play, you know, Brikaku, you know, Timberlands and Jeans Lukaku. This is Lukaku. This has been Lukaku for two or three years. This is not a surprise to me. I knew exactly what type of player we were buying. You have to live with these shortcomings. He's not going to improve on his touch at 26 years old. But what he brings is what Antonio Conte wants. You know, the, when he has space to run in behind, he's very, very dangerous. Uh, you know, running with the ball, he's so powerful. Yes, he's not that good with his back to go, especially given his size. He should be a lot better. But, he, you know, he's trying his best, uh, you know, to give Antonio Conte what he wants. And he's a proven goal scorer, you know, he scored two goals again for Belgium. He's the all-time leading top scorer at 26 years old, 51 goals in 80-something matches. I mean, what more do you want? This guy is a proven goal scorer and he will score goals this season and I'm sure of that. And that's why I'm giving him a seven. Moving on to our coach, the biggest signing of our season, I would say. I'm giving him an eight. <clears throat> Not many Inter fans expected to be sitting, you know, just one point behind Juventus at this point. You know, in my season predictions, I predicted us to finish third, but that's because I was expecting Napoli to do a little bit better, uh, but they've started not so well under Ancelotti. But you know, the way Antonio Conte has implemented his pattern plays and tactics, and the way he's kind of brought this team together in terms of the chemistry that we can clearly see out there has been outstanding. I think there is not much argument that he is the best coach in the world at making impact on a team in a very short amount of time. I mean, you can clearly see the Antonio Conte footprint on this team everywhere, you know, the way this team plays. And of course, that three at the back formation that usually has not worked well at Inter historically, but, you know, he's making it work. The defence, which was our strong point last season already, is even stronger now. You know, we, we hardly concede any shots on goal and hardly concede any goals at all. Going forward is where I'm concerned a little bit more. We were seeing some of that pattern play and stuff, but, you know, the depth that we're lacking in, uh, in midfield in terms of uh, if Sensi or Barella get injured and the goal scoring threat that we're lacking there is concerning to me and the wing backs as well. Um, in terms of their attacking contributions. Tony Conte proving why he's the highest paid coach in the league and uh, expecting to continue on this route in the, after the international break. I, don't, I think the Scudetto is too far for us. Uh, Juve's squad depth is uh, ridiculous. Um, I think it's too, it's too early to talk about the Scudetto. So I'm ex still expecting, you know, sick finishing second or third. I think I'll be very satisfied with that. And of course, to our fans, to the Tifosi Interisti around the world, always giving a 10. You guys in Milan or from around the world, always filling up the San Siro Miata Stadium and around the world, always watching Inter, whether you're in Australia, Indonesia, London, US, Miami, you know, you guys, uh, hats off to everyone. And by the way, guys, this was uh, uh, my final video for Semper Inter TV. It has been a great journey. It's just a personal choice, you know, I've spoken to Nima at Semper Inter and the other guys. Um, I'm going to start doing my own channel, uh, Uncle Sharma. I've left the link in the description below if you want to subscribe. I'll be making very similar videos around Inter, Serie A, maybe Premier League. But, you know, going on my own journey. 
Thank you very much to everyone who's watched. Uh, Kami and Bilal and Renato, Nima, everyone in the team will be taking over. They'll continue to do a great job as we have been doing. Uh, thank you for everyone for your support. But as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Forza Inter and sempre Inter.